Hello, welcome to Doomberg. News just in, Greece receives another bailout and the wheels stay on the euro. Greece will receive about 130 billion if it can assure its lenders that they will pass their children round as debt toys for the fiscal pleasure of unnamed bankers. Look, can we please stop calling this a bailout, by the way? It's not a bailout. It's a debt in. They are now in more debt. Indebted to, as in debt. By getting into debt. In debt, debty, debty, debt. It's not a fucking bailout. Uh, unless you're the banker who stands to lose every fake cent you foisted on these people through the corruption of their leaders. Yeah, it's a bailout for you. For the predatory debtophiles preying on innocent nations in the swing parks of international finance. Yeah, it's a bailout for bankers. Bankers that created and lent the fake money in the first place and who are desperate to keep the Greek people in their bondage dungeon of debt. Yeah, baby. Wow, 130 billion. Hang on, I'll press print. Uh, <laughs> wait till the ink dries before you spend it. Uh, I mean, give it back to my friends, the thieves, who you owe it to. Please, if you're gonna mercilessly rob a whole country in broad daylight, at least have the nuts to say it like it is. Uh, we're a bunch of thieves who are helping our friends, who are also thieves, to continue thieving. So they won't lose control of the people they're both stealing from. Ha! Bailouts! Bailouts? That's a good one. It's debt. Debt. Debty debt. Okay? Not out of anything, like out of debt or bailout, but in something. In more fucking debt. Thanks. Now, a quick look at the markets. Uh, fear is up. Death is up. Famine is up. War is up. Poverty is up. And growth in all of them is expected for at least the next century. Amidst violence clashes between police and protesters, the Greek parliament voted in favour of a fantastic package of poverty, uh, austerity measures, Intended to save a few wealthy bankers losing their money. I mean, save Greece from running its own affairs. The proposed tax hikes and spending cuts are very popular with bankers who lent the money they knew the nation couldn't afford, as it means they now own Greece, its people and its resources. Hoorah! Here's a special report from our correspondent in Greece, Stelios Debt Masses. Viewers are warned this report contains flash photography and disturbing scenes of a population powerless to resist financial slavery. Over 2,000 years ago, ancient Greece was the birthplace of democracy, a form of government in which all citizens had an equal say in governing their lives. Now, in modern Greece, we see the birth of debt-democracy, a form of government where the people you owe money to govern your lives. Debt-democracy is sweeping away the sovereignty of people from Ireland to Spain, Portugal to Greece. Debt-democracy is coming to your country soon, if it's not already there. And it works something like this. You're a political party in opposition. After receiving large amounts of election funding from, oh, let's say, Lord Astor Rockachild the 113rd and his friends, you get elected. Now you're the government and temporarily in control of your country's finances. Woohoo! Time to serve the people. But then, the phone rings. It's Lord Astor Morgan Stanley Blackbeard the 911th. He says, you need to borrow vast amounts of money from him and his friends, or that picture of you with a goat is hitting the internet. You agree because, hey, what the fuck, you won't be paying it back, the people will. Anyway, you're looking forward to your next date with a goat. Meh. Years later, a new government is elected, interest rates have to rise, inflation rises, wages rise, and the cost of goats becomes prohibitive. The country's in ruins, the public sector can't function, why not borrow more money? <laughs> After all, you won't be paying it back, the people will. So, it's off to the IMF, World Bank, European Central Bank, but there's a problem. The banks want leverage, collateral, guarantees, influence over fiscal policy and control of government spending. In short, you become a nation of bailout bitches and government bond games because now you're the GOAT and lubrication is unaffordable. Markets around the world have reeled in horror and plunged to new lows after an announcement by the Greek Prime Minister that some form of shady democratic referendum will be used to decide on the Greek bailout plan. World leaders are shocked and dismayed by the announcement, with many saying it's simply wrong for the people themselves to decide their own fate. 
As riots and unrest rock Athens and other Eurozone countries, many are questioning whether democracy has any role to play in the fiscal policies of countries that owe banks money. Here's a special report from our correspondent, profit monger slave whipper. Ahead of the G20 meeting this weekend, many world leaders were looking forward to an easy weekend of rubber stamping economic slavery and debt forever. Instead, they now find themselves in the uncomfortable position of waiting to see what people actually want. Usually, of course, the deal done in secret back rooms last week would simply be foisted on the people of Greece, but it appears the Greek Prime Minister let slip his chains and did something completely unexpected. He did his job. He deferred to the will of the people, he failed to carry out the settled will of our shadowy puppet masters, and he offered the people of Greece real choice. Well, as you can imagine, the markets are naturally pissed about this and have been falling ever since. It remains to be seen if some kind of corrupt, lying malpractice can stop the will of the people playing a part in their own future. And finally, a look at the currency markets. Uh, the dollar, as usual, worth fuck all. The pound worth fuck all, the euro worth less than fuck all, and many other currencies soon to follow suit. In surprise, unelection results across Europe, Goldman Sachs has appointed itself leader of Greece and Italy, and now runs the European Central Bank. Just in time to bail itself out of the debt it got into fiddling the books of those countries back in the 90s, allowing vast losses accrued by Goldman to be transferred as debt to the people of the Eurozone. You can see how that works there. Mario Monti replaces Berlusconi in Italy. He's listed as an international advisor to Goldman Sachs in his official bio. And Lucas Papademos, the new Greek premier, was governor of the Central Bank of Greece until 2002, where he worked hard to secure his country's successful entry into the euro using a system of derivatives to, to disguise the debt of their country designed by Goldman Sachs. Meanwhile, the new head of the European Central Bank, Mario Draghi, was director of the Italian Treasury at the time of these deals and is now perhaps the most powerful man on the continent as the new head of the European Central Bank. In 2005, Draghi left the Italian Treasury immediately taking up work for Goldman Sachs. So now these hatchet men of this murky financial world are being appointed to implement austerity on poor working households and save the financial sector from debt deflation, an artificial crisis they created. Great. Uh, the result was being celebrated across Europe as a victory for the few wealthy bankers who own nearly everything anyway. Some commentators have suggested there might be a conflict of interest if you have unelected, lying, thieving, greedy bankers running your economy who force you to pay off the debts of their former employees whilst they're supposed to be forcing you to pay off the debts of their former employees by, by running your economy as unelected, lying, thieving, greedy bankers. But others have said, a what bop a loob up a bim bam boo. Uh, the markets responded to the idea of ass raping the people of Europe to keep a few wealthy families fat and fucking happy with the fuck you index up 2.5 points, the fat cat index up 3.7 and in New York the bow down and take it is right up. I mean it's right up as far as it could go. And finally let's have a look at the currency markets. The dollar is slightly up on reports that as toilet paper it's not too bad. Uh, the euro is beginning to stabilize as an instrument of economic slavery and the pound is up against the dollar as the opportunity to wipe your ass on the Queen's face lures investors from the Far East. Uh, lots of activity on the markets today. Prospects of a euro bailout settlement sent shares in backslapping, hand rubbing and nudge nudge winky winky PLC soaring as investors seek to claw back sovereignty from countries in the eurozone. Uh, death futures are trading at an all-time high with some major head funds taking out options on up to three or four billion deaths in the next 50 years. In Asia, slavery bonds are flat as China struggles with emerging civil liberty protests, but most analysts think the situation will improve in the last quarter as China kidnaps, tortures and executes many of them. And of course, it was the same situation in Saudi and Bahrain, where dead bodies littering the streets had scared off some business, but they've all been cleaned up now. Uh, markets in the Middle East have reacted quickly to the death of Gaddafi in Libya and elections in Tunisia, with huge gains for Murder Inc., Exploitocore, Debtcon Limited, and others. Uh, gold continues to weigh the same on all exchanges, no matter how much you buy, and oil is expected to rise forever and ever and ever until the last drop is fracked out of the Marianas Trench by robots in the 20th century, much of it to be used to lubricate reality. 
Uh, let's have a look at the currency markets finally. Uh, as you can see, the dollar is uh, worth fuck all, the euro is worth fuck all, and the pound also, and in fact, worth fuck all. Rescue efforts have resumed off the coast of Tuscany aboard the wrecked Eurozone currency liner. The Eurozone currency ran aground last year when it hit a submerged mountain of debt. Here's our special report. The Eurozone was launched amid a fanfare of celebrations. A single currency, they said, would be unsinkable. The economic benefits would outweigh the threat of faceless rule by bankercrats. And if your population didn't like it, tough shit, they still had to come aboard as ballast. But with a motley crew of greedy bankers and a passenger list which included super-rich Germany and the dirt-poor debt-ridden countries of Greece, Italy and Portugal, some people claimed it would never float. Or if it did, it would sink under the weight of its own debt-mocracy. At first, all went well. For 20 years, the Eurozone sailed the world's currency markets. Investors queued up to pile debt onto the ship so its passengers could be even more comfortable and enjoy even greater luxury. The Eurozone was a triumph of monetary union and a model for future currency consolidation around the world. The Euro made many popular cruises to the derivative islands and the picturesque coastlines of fractional reserve banking. But its success was short-lived. Passengers, it seemed, had been throwing their debts overboard to avoid looking poor at the captain's table. Greece threw so much debt overboard, a small island grew up around it. Then disaster struck. It seems the captain of the Euro had been sailing ever closer to the rocky coastline of Derivative Island. The ship hit the submerged debt of Greece, ripping large holes in the hull. Panicky passengers begged a few wealthy bankers to plug the hole with brand new debt and in exchange for the new debt, the bankers were made captains of the ship. Soon they demanded everybody huddle together in third class while they partied in the ballroom. The Greek people had got used to the first class accommodation on the Euro and complained violently, threatening to jump overboard with a raft of newly printed drachma. Other passengers raised concerns that even if the ship could be saved, the crew had abandoned ship so they would soon become its crew, shoveling freshly printed money into the boilers whilst serving the bankers champagne breakfast and lobster dinners. As conditions worsen, it seems saving the stricken ship will need even more bankers, even more debt and slightly less passengers. Silvio Berlusconi has resigned as Prime Minister of Italy, or rather he says he will once he sells the Italian people into sexual slavery. I mean, once budget reforms are passed through Parliament. Market fears about Italy's austerity package are behind the continuing turmoil in the Eurozone as bankers push for more and more concessions from political leaders. What will it take to save the Eurozone? I'm just guessing, but I'll bet fiscal unification will ride to the rescue. Oh yeah, baby. Oh, ooh, you've been very naughty, sovereign nations of Europe. You've all borrowed too much money from the Mafia, uh, banks, and now you can't afford to pay him back. Let's see what Don Rocky Astafella III has got to say. So, uh, Europe, you got on my money? Why you not got on my money? Ain't I been good to you, eh? Mamma mia, I give you all that money. What'd you spend it on? What you got for it? Nah, and now, so now you come to me with your hand out. You come to me, Don Ducky Astrofella the Third. Hmm, well, I'm gonna make you an offer you can't refuse. We gonna put all your debts together one central bank, hey, my central bank. We're gonna privatize all of the utilities as legitimate businesses, of course. And I'm gonna tell you how much tax you raise on your people. Welcome to the family. Of course, it's widely suspected that the Mafia uh, banks are the architects of the debt, the credit crunch and the bailouts, leaving a few wealthy people in charge of our economies and tax regimes. With widespread civil unrest likely to continue in Greece and grow in Italy, many people are struggling to come to terms with being bankers' bitches. Meanwhile, Silvio Berlusconi's political career is over and he faces a stark future as a multi-billionaire playboy. Well, old man. So, uh, let's wrap up a uh, look at the markets. Fear still selling well, insecurities bottomed out, hope is doing well even though most traders acknowledge it's overvalued. And a quick look at the currencies. The dollar's worth half a gallon of crude oil, but only because we'll kill you if you sell it in anything else. 
The pound is worth fuck all, and the euro is worth saving if you can end up exploiting the 22 nations who use it for long-term profit. Thanks, see you next time on Doomberg.